So welcome to um, Millie's Guide to High School Volunteering. Um, if there are any questions that you have, um, you can um, answer the or send questions on the chat box on the right. And um, yeah, so this uh, presentation is about 20 minutes long, and um, I'm going to be talking to you about volunteering in high school, you know, different benefits and reasons behind volunteering, but also um, uh, some obstacles that people face with volunteering and um, how to overcome them. And maybe we can change the slide. So a little bit about me. So I'm Yusuf Ayala. I'm a Finnish journalist and a student in environmental law at the University of Eastern Finland. Um, and I've been uh, I'm working on my dissertation currently on the conservation of narwhals. And during my career and my studies, I have also volunteered for organizations like UNICEF, the Red Cross, and ISEC. And uh, during my journalism career, I have also done some pro bono work for the Finnish Association of Nature Conservation. So I've been asked to talk a little bit about volunteering, what to expect with volunteering, and um, how to overcome them. So maybe the next slide, I can talk to you a little bit about the agenda. So for the agenda today, we're going to talk about reasons to volunteer at high school. So what are the reasons behind it? How to find the right opportunity and how to overcome these challenges with volunteering and how to get started. Um, so the next slide starts with a quote by a really well-known civil rights activist, Martin Luther King Jr. Um, life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? And this is an incredibly uh, important question to ask uh, and really embodies the character of volunteering at its essence and the potential of what volunteering can achieve. And in the next slide, we have some reasons to volunteer. So volunteering can really well uh, bring community together uh, and show the power of community engagement. And this is uh, something that can have the power to change, um, you know, create positive change. It can alleviate suffering of others, help those in need, and also fight for injustice. And there are many cases uh, in history where volunteering has achieved that. And that's why the previous quote, I think, is really important um, um, and a very kind of monument to volunteering. And in the next slide, there are some research findings on the benefits of volunteering. So. Volunteering has been found to bring meaning and purpose uh, into people's lives. And uh, this is especially important when you have your values that you're fighting for through volunteering. Uh, and with your action as a volunteer, you can grow your self-esteem and well-being uh, and also find community and new friends because you are uh, in a like-minded environment uh, working for change for the better. Uh, and this can also grow you as a person and bring you new skills uh, that you can also later utilize in your careers, for instance. Um, and most importantly, I think, uh, in addition to, uh, as, and maybe because of, uh, partly, uh, the causes uh, that you're working toward that align with your values, uh, it can also bring you happiness and fun into your life. And together with all of this, you can create positive change. Uh, and that's why volunteering has uh, various benefits. And it's you know, really um, um, is a very beneficial activity to engage in. Um, and in the next slide, there are different types of volunteering. And I think this is in no ways an exhaustive list of different volunteering opportunities uh, that are out there, but you can volunteer basically in any type of way. So it can be engaging in community service or, you know, working in research and science, supporting literacy programs, uh, supporting youth organizations or work in el elderly care. Uh, but you can also uh, maybe create volunteering initiatives in um, hobbies that you already have. Uh, this can be sports and recreation, culture and arts, uh, or you can also work in areas where you want to help, you know, the people in need in your local community. It can be, you know, working and volunteering in homeless shelters or uh, also engaging in uh, animal welfare or environmental conservation. So it's pretty much up to you. Um, and in the next slide, I'm going to move on a little bit more into how to find the right opportunity for you. Um, yeah. So finding the right opportunity to volunteer is really important. And I think there is really um, 
this may be like a four step uh, four step process that I personally um, have used and also return and revisit uh, as I'm volunteering um, um, and have volunteered in different kinds of organizations. And in the next slide, we go into specifics. So I think with volunteering, it's really important that you start with a self-assessment of what you want to do. Uh, and this is about you discovering your interests, uh, your passions, uh, what you want to do, what kind of skills do you have, uh, mapping out, you know, is there maybe something that you enjoy doing specifically? Is there something that you might want to do in the future and develop? Um, and also thinking about what is important to you, you know, where do you want to make your impact? And as you have established these, uh, you can move on into looking into different organizations that are out there. Um, and there are, you know, organizations, uh, student associations, different communities and societies uh, where you can, um, you know, very different kinds of groups are out there. Um, and I think it can also be a struggle in kind of finding and mapping out what's important to you. Uh, but you can use websites, social media, talk to your teachers, uh, other students, your friends and family uh, into knowing, you know, different causes that might be out there. Um, and then next, you should try to align your own values with the organizations uh, that are interesting to you. And this is a great way to get started into, um, you know, establishing the kind of role or the kind of, you know, volunteer activity that you might want to be engaged with. Um, and the next thing is to set clear goals. Oh, maybe we can go but yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then setting goals. Um, so uh, you might want to think about what you want to achieve then specifically. So going more into specifics uh, as you go forward, uh, you know, what skills might you want to develop? Um, would you rather do volunteering on your own? So maybe you want to write an article for like a volunteer paper that's discussing a certain theme or a certain area of, of, of society or uh, would you maybe want to develop new skills or making new friends? Uh, do you maybe want to have uh, a community that you want to have like-minded people surrounding you? Uh, or are there specific contributions uh, that you really want to make that you already know? And with that in mind, um, you can start getting started with your journey as a volunteer. Uh, so you can then start contacting these organizations and uh, you can attend fairs or meetings or, you know, and then go specific, ask specific questions about what you feel like you want to do, what are the skills you have, what are the causes that interest you, uh, for instance, how much time do you have to use? Uh, so if there might be like one event you could assist in, or if there's like a whole uh, fundraising campaign you might want to initiate and lead. Um, so all of this, uh, you can start asking, you know, these different organizations and groups, uh, or even within your own hobbies, or, you know, even within your school. And most importantly, I think it's to trust your instinct. So what feels right is usually right. So uh, the most important thing is to identify your values and align your values with the organizations that are out there. Um, and the next slide, I'll move a little more specific, uh, specifically into the expectations, what you can have with volunteering. Um, and there are certain obstacles uh, that people face. Oftentimes, I face many obstacles with volunteering um, and having worked in different organizations, uh, but there are also ways to overcome them. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. So with volunteering in high school specifically, um, it's really important and very central, I think like a central issue that you can sometimes have is balancing your school with volunteering because these both activities have their own schedules. You may have exams or assessments and assignments that you might have uh, to put more effort into at certain times, but at some times you might have more like free time or maybe you want to also have a little break from studying. So balancing your school and volunteering is really important. Um, and these are, you know, four areas that I've identified as being really helpful in those moments uh, when I might be struggling a little bit about or a little bit with the um, like overlapping schedules. Uh, and the first one is to prioritize and set goals. So you have your academic goals, you might have your volunteering goals uh, and desires. So determining those and kind of writing them out, determining your academic priorities, you know, if you have finals or if you have like period assessments and all of this, um, you can then um, uh, determine exactly, you know, what types of, uh, you know, F, how much time do these require? And then setting those goals as to, okay, I want to achieve these grades or, you know, really put my effort into like biology or English or, you know, what have you. Um, and then prioritize your time for that. 
and then creating a schedule and maybe seeing if there is some space for extra time um, that you can then uh, use uh, to other things such as volunteering. Uh, but important is also to communicate with your teachers and coordinators and your parents, uh, maybe your like study group or hobbies and friends that you are volunteering now. You also have these school assignments uh, so that they are aware of the fact that you have a, maybe a tight schedule or you are working a schedule. Um, and important is to stay organized because, you know, with organization, things don't necessarily turn out to be chaotic uh, and you're able to manage your time. And it's a really good life skill to have anyways. Um, and learning to say no. So if you have, you know, if your time is scarce, uh, you can always say no and you can always say like, hey, I don't have time for this right now. Maybe in a couple of months I would. Um, um, so let me get back to you then. So learning how to set your boundaries and defend them. Um, and managing your studies uh, can also be very helpful, especially, um, you know, if you have finals or exams coming up or assignments. Uh, and this is really something that is very individual, but, you know, some things that have helped me are, you know, establishing study groups, uh, utilizing free periods, uh, using online resources, and in general, just developing the kinds of techniques that support your studying uh, in an effective and, you know, good manner. Um, and finally, and maybe the most importantly, uh, to practice good self-care. So reviewing and adjusting uh, your time and schedule and who... Uh, and, you know, how much time time do you have? And, you know, for instance, if you had a difficult month, maybe going back to looking at your schedule and thinking about, you know, what went right, what went wrong, what might, you know, want to change in the future. So, you know, keeping a constant reflection, I guess, and having time for relaxation and staying flexible with your good scheduling and also seeking support if you feel like you are overwhelmed. Um, so communicating um, um, how you feel. Uh, is really important, especially. So no one should struggle alone, especially because volunteering is supposed to be something that brings you um, happiness and joy. So remembering that. And in the next slide, I've set out some of these common challenges that I have personally faced with volunteering. So one of them is time management. So as discussed in the previous slide, sometimes time can be scarce and then you really have to schedule and prioritize and as volunteering is volunteer based uh you shouldn't be forcing yourself into you know working towards something if you don't have the time or energy so prioritizing where you need your time um and really respecting respecting those desires that you have another thing can be that uh volunteering can be too much work sometimes so sometimes there's a campaign um, that you planned. And then when it happens, there might be other commitments that come up, uh, whether it be hobbies or school. Um, and in this case, it's important to limit your commitments. Maybe you can share some of those responsibilities with your friends uh, that you're volunteering with and letting your coordinators uh, know or teachers know that, you know, your schedule is quite full at the time. So maybe you can have some help with understanding what's important and what not. So um, yeah, so balancing these priorities and another kind of practical aspect uh, in the first box uh, are the lack of resources too. So sometimes I face this issue of when I've started to organize events or plan, you know, activities for a volunteering group. It's been like, you know, we don't have enough, you know, resources, we don't have enough people or money uh, to do things. So then uh, it's time to get creative. And I think this is something that's really uh, something that I enjoy in volunteering and that you have pretty much infinite resources in your mind uh, to go through uh, different plans that you have. Um, for instance, instead of organizing an event uh, somewhere, if you don't have the people, you can maybe uh, do a social media campaign uh, that's, that takes less resources, but can be really impactful, especially in fundraising or raising awareness over certain causes and issues uh, and de developing your skills as well. And um, so, yeah, so that's another common challenge, but there are ways to overcome them as well. Um, other common challenges are that you lose interest. Uh, you may have emotional difficulties with the issues uh, that you are dealing with. For instance, if they are like animal welfare or environmental conservation, uh, they're quite serious topics as well. So they can have an emotional impact on you. Uh, another thing that you don't feel like you see the impact of your volunteering and that can also make you lose interest. And some of the ways to overcome these challenges are that, especially with your interest, is to reconnect with your passion. So 
sometimes you might be volunteering for a group or for a cause and then you feel like oh I might be interested in putting my energy and time into some other cause or there might be something else that I'm more passionate about and then you should start maybe thinking about pursuing different kinds of um uh, volunteering activities uh, if they give you more motivation and interest uh, with emotional toll of the things uh, you can always talk to others um, and I mean it's really encouraged that you know you share uh, your feelings and and maybe have even sessions uh, if you have a group uh, if you have a group that you can you know share your uh, thoughts and uh, emotions and maybe you know have extra sessions specifically for uh, talking about the burden of volunteering um, um, and it can be really useful and also create that connection with your uh, peers um, and with impacts I would say that it's important to develop metrics that you can uh, refer back to so it might be even an amount of money that you might have you know collected through a fundraising campaign or maybe the amount of people that have seen your social media campaign about you know, talking about the conservation of certain species, for instance, and, you know, this information. So then you can have some kind of tangible, um, some tangible um, um, information that you can always kind of look into and, and evaluate how much you have uh, that your activity and, uh, and volunteering has had an impact on. And this also relates to the next slide um, that sometimes that is something that I find a lot of um, comfort from is the bigger picture of volunteering and volunteering is a really like international um, and there are a lot of international volunteering opportunities too um, that you can also join many organizations have uh, volunteer exchanges for instance like ISEC for, uh, for example and even if you are doing your own individual act of volunteering uh, when you combine that with all the people around the world who are, you know, working toward different causes and the same causes, uh, the impact is amplified. So um, this is something that I tr like to keep in mind. And uh, in the next slide, I've also brought forward a little bit of my experiences, some images. So these images are taken uh, on two different, uh, volunteering in two different organizations. Uh, the, on the right-hand side are UNICEF Finland. On the left-hand side is ISEC, and ISEC Finland and ISEC Myanmar uh, in cooperation. So um, in Finland, uh, I have done uh, fundraising um, actions. So in the lower right-hand side, lower image, um, we accepted a donation of 530 euros, um, just approximately $500. Um, that was directly... Um, allocated to the Children's Emergency Fund uh, in Syria uh, in 2017. Uh, and then the picture above, uh, we organized a panel discussion with UNICEF and UN Women and the Amnesty International uh, local organizations. So we had a panel discussion on the International uh, Women's Day uh, where we discussed with activists and specialists and volunteers the um, situation of women around the world. Uh, and gender equality um, and there were many people who were attending this uh, event that was free so this was an kind of an example of a local local level activism but on the left hand side I traveled to Myanmar in 2018 um, I was uh, traveling to five different uh, cities um, all around the country um, holding workshops on peace and conflict uh, transformation and I worked with uh, young university students around the world. And this was very kind of practical level uh, volunteer uh, work uh, that was very different from the one that I did on the local side, but also having worked in the local volunteering sphere helped me also to um, give me the strength and the confidence to go abroad as well. So these are just different types of um, um, examples and, and activities that I have taken part in. And uh, yeah, uh, in the next slide, this is already the conclusion. So what uh, we've covered today, so we've gone through a little bit about the reasons to volunteer at high school, finding that right opportunity, how to get started in you know, assessing your own interests and passions and values, uh, aligning those with the organizations that you find interesting, and then seeing you know, what could you do specifically. Um, and then when you might face these uh, challenges with volunteering, then a little bit about how to overcome them um, and how to uh, perhaps uh, reignite your motivation or, you know, reschedule your 
time so that it doesn't burden you and you get the joy out of it. And finally, uh, some practical examples on like how to get started with your journey. Uh, so yeah, so with that, um, I want to thank you. And if you have any questions, uh, I would be happy to answer them. But yeah, I hope you gain some information from this uh, on your journey forward with volunteering. Thank you. All right, I'll give you maybe 30 seconds. If you have any questions, uh, you can write them in the box. But if you don't, um, I want to thank you for your time uh, in this presentation. Um, and I hope you have gained some insights into volunteering uh, with this. And uh, with that, I really want to hope you wish you a really nice day um, and hope you get started with your journey with volunteering. Yeah. Yeah. And like us on Instagram and find us on LinkedIn. You can always get in touch with us um, in case you have further questions. And we'd be happy to help if you have any questions uh, coming up uh, later. So thank you so much. Bye.